Hey, what's up guys, Rob Arnold here, and welcome to another Quick Riffs, where I teach and explain and show off riffs and songs, hopefully get you up and running and rocking all night long. Today we're gonna be looking at Kamira's Pure Hatred from our Impossibility of Reason record. It's an easy one, I know you got this. I'm gonna take you through riff by riff and explain it all, break it all down for you. If you're new to the channel, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you're subscribed because I got tons of other quick riffs and guitar lesson videos and all sorts of cool stuff for you to explore. If you're a veteran to the channel, thanks so much for coming back. Whether you're new or old to the channel though, if you have the ability, please check out my Patreon campaign where you can help support at a greater level, which is oh so helpful to me. Get a little behind the scenes, get a closer look and more interaction to Bob Arnold's world. You know, and thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. You guys help the world go round for me. Appreciate it all. Thanks so much, guys. And if you can't support on Patreon, that's totally cool too. A thumbs up will work just fine. So let's get into it here. We are in drop C, C G C F A D, low to high. <laughs> All right, first riff, the intro riff, is kind of the same as the verse riff, just with some little variations. We're gonna start on one, four, five, two. That Tom Beats playing underneath. Easy. And when everything kicks in. Same chords. Them. And then I hit the octave. Matt's going. And I'm going. Same notes, just the octave. And those octaves, I'm on six on five. Eight on three. And that fourth string, I'm kind of muting it so it doesn't come through. I have told you. So we're into the verse just like that. And then when that verse kind of ends before the chorus, it's kind of like a little pre-chorus thing. So it's chugging on two. So that starts the chorus there. What I'm doing there is I'm just bending on four, a whole step. And you know you're bending to a full step if you can do it on six, four, six. So that gives your ear some relativity to the correct pitch. If you're only doing a quarter step or a half step, up to five, maybe a half step there. It's not quite right, you need to go to six. Two. Of course, better. So. That pattern is just something you kind of just need to listen to. If it isn't engraved into your mind already for all those long time fans since 2003, I know it is, but if it's new to you or you haven't tried to play it before, you just kind of kind of play along with it and get that pattern down. It's kind of like groups of, a couple groups of eight with some straight chugging in between. Six. When I said six, it was a little group of six. So it's kind of like two groups of eight, a six, and then an eight. Um, and then this is again one of those octave chords, five on five, seven on three. Again, the fourth string's muted, so it doesn't ring through. If it did ring through, it sound like this. I'm muting it by barely touching my, my finger to it. Vicious cycle. Or whatever he says. We start verse two. Same as the first. Back into the course. Everyone I hate. Course two. And then we 
hit into the bridge. And that little transition uh -huh. there was three, four, six, two. And we're doing little triplets. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now we're back into the chorus riff again, but on open, we dropped a half step. So some different things about that. First of all, we dropped a half step. We're playing just in C now, open. And the pattern's slightly different, I believe. accent is also a half step lower because everything's half step lower so that octave chord there octave accent i'm four on five six on three after we hit that just a little variation back up to c sharp on one there again here's that whole part into what's going to be the bridge. And whether it's important or not, just wanted to mention that when we do drop, uh, jump up to that, that one for that little bit there, as little as that is, it's just a little important songwriting tip for those who are interested. So we're all sitting around in the jam space writing the song back in 2002, 2003. And um, you know, everybody's tossing around ideas and somebody says, hey, why don't we jump up a half step there just for that one bar. Uh, just to just to spice it up a little bit and we used to do those type of things all the time in our songs you know just a little add an, an extra beat here um, uh, vary uh, the chord progression just slightly even though it's the same type of part so just jumping up to that little one there it's just one extra little little bit of seasoning to put into the mix there you know and Mark he was always just trying to add little things like that and so I get I bet that idea was his and the whole point of this is is that if you're just writing music by yourself you know, totally by yourself and recording, chances are you probably would have just done the same thing or copy or pasted in the same part. Never would have stumbled onto a little thing like that where the accumulation of those little things helped to make a song awesome, a song memorable rather than just kind of stock, you know? So because we were jamming in a room together, bouncing ideas off one another, those type of little things are thought of as minuscule as it is. Again, it just probably wouldn't have been thought of had like I've just written the song myself in my room. So. Jamming with dudes is important. Um, you know, pulling out different tricks is important. And, you know, not always a lot of cooks in the kitchen is a good idea, but sometimes it can be because good things can happen on happen from it. So let's jump into this little guy here. Here's Matt. That's five on five. Six on four. And then Matt hits this part. show you that in a sec he continues on that for a long time but i'm doing a harmony of that so we'll get into that anyways math part five on five six on six five on six then hammer pull off five six five on the fifth string and then six five open I'm muting pretty much everything except for what I want accented. And then. And those are what I call flatted fourths. The fourth fret on the fifth and fourth string. Then the third fret on the fifth and fourth string. And there's some dents in between. My part exactly the same picking but all my notes are four notes higher what we call the corpse harmony so he's here I'm here four notes. so that's eight on five nine on six 
on six. Hammer pull off. Eight, nine, eight on five. Then nine, eight. My flat force there are the seventh fret and the sixth fret. And then uh, the halfway point of that. Both doing that, that little tail there. And again, they're just four notes apart to make that corpse harmony. I'm going 10, 7, 5, up half step, 11, 8, 11, 8 on the fourth string, up to 14 on the fourth string. So Matt, it's just four frets down. Seven, four, eight, four, five, eight, five, eleven. And then we both meet up. He continues what he was doing before, and I meet with him. told you. So again there that's you have to pick and choose your fights. You have to come out of this alive. I have told you. This never came to my head. Just That was real pick this. Same notes. Harmony. I'm not as good as playing it when I'm trying to sing it at the same time. Um, but we got uh, that little tear there. Again, same as before where it's three, four, but instead of going six, two, like uh, before the bridge, we're just gonna do the first two notes of that and slide up to 15. Just a big slide down. Instead of slide up to 15, it's just a slide down into the outro. And then a quick slide up and a slower slide down. No particular note that I'm starting with or, or trying to get to. I'm just and I think of that as a ramp, a quick ramp up and a slow ramp down. Quick ramp up, slow ramp down. So that's it. See, super easy. I'm sure a lot of you guys could play this already, but seeing the notes kind of up close and exactly how we do it was my point here to get you rolling. Another just cool song with some cool riffs to learn to help strengthen your arsenal, up down picking, muting, note choice, song arrangement, things like that. A lot of, a lot to learn from a song that ended up being, um, you know, quite successful for us and uh, you know one that everyone knows is a staple to Kamira's sound. So appreciate everybody tuning in. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channel, please. Give the video a thumbs up as it really helps. Check out everything I've got to offer on the channel and hopefully I will see you guys on the next one. Cheers. 
quick reminder for all the guitar players out there, I've got an instructional DVD through the Rock House Method that you can check out at my store, robarnoldworld.com slash store, as well as my Tone Crate Bundle, packed with all the classic Camira tones for the Kemper Profiling app. So if you're a Kemper owner, you can get my Camira Signature Bundle, again, in the Rob Arnold World store, robarnoldworld.com slash store.